so glad to have you with us today as we celebrate our children in a special way. And as we, I need your help, young people, with a prayer of illumination, meaning the prayer that will help us see what God is saying, okay? And Auntie Diana is going to help us. <laughs> We're going to sing Someone's Praying. Can you sing? Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Good job. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Y'all can do the motions too. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Good job, guys. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. That story that our readers read, did you learn that story? Anybody, when you were a little kid, Samuel, Sunday school or Hebrew school? Um, I did. When I was your age, and even when I was a teenager, I had this amazing Sunday school teacher. Her name was Mrs. Dixon. And she was softly brown and soft to hug. And she was the color of hot chocolate on a cold day. And she was mine all the way from your age to high school because her son, Daryl, upon whom I had a crush, was in my class all the way to high school. She really brought our Bible stories to life. She used everything she had in her trick book, music and dance and art and imagination to make sure that the Bible stories got off the page and came into our bodies. So for example, when it was time for us to teach us that Jesus had the power to calm the seas, she had us whistling, whistling, and blowing till our cheeks got all tired. And then she had us making rain, first soft rain, and then really hard rain. And then pretty soon the rain got to be so hard, we were popping our fingers and popping our fingers and clapping our hands. And so when she finally said, peace, we were like, oh, wow. God can even make the storms quiet? That's amazing. Then she taught us about Noah's Ark and the flood. She taught us a really silly song that I still remember, unfortunately. <laughs> the Lord said to Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody. The Lord said to Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody. Get those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord. See all those people out there who sung that song when we were little? The animals say, no, let's not do it. <laughs> we were just beginning to ask questions about why there was a flood. Why did God get mad enough to make it rain? And just when we were a little confused, she told us, you know, God said God would never do that again. And God put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of God's promise. So the story that our readers read today is a story about Samuel, who was a little boy when this thing was written. Not a big boy, but a young boy. And it says that Samuel kept hearing this voice, and he thought it was Eli who was his mentor, but it turned out that it was God. And when he found out that it was God, God came, the story says, all the way to Samuel's room. 
like his own bedroom, right in his room, maybe in a dream, but came right there and had a conversation with Samuel like he was a big grown-up, but he was still a boy. I think that's wonderful that God would talk to children, to a child. So he told Samuel this story, and he said, you know what? I'm going to have to punish Eli because Eli's kids, like, don't believe in me anymore and didn't do what they were told to do. And when I was little and I heard that story, I thought, I don't even think that's fair. I don't even think it's fair if Eli is going to be punished because of something his kids did. But Samuel got the message, and Samuel told the message to Eli, and Eli said, you know, God is God, and God keeps God's promises. Now, I'm a big old grown lady now, much older than you, but I, very much older than you, but I still don't love the idea that God is going to punish us for something. I just don't really like that. But the way I think about it is this. I think that sometimes, even though God loves us so much and even though God really, really cares about us, I think sometimes God stands back a little bit and is like, let's see what they're going to do. Let's see if they're going to take care of each other. Let's see what they're going to do. Let's see if they're going to make the world a better place. So this idea of reaping what we sow, have you ever heard that? Like reaping what you sow? You put the seeds in the ground and they're going to grow. Here, here's what that means. If we, like, let's say we're selfish and we think we can take somebody else's land, we reap what we sow because then those people feel sad that we took their land. Or let's say we found the island of Puerto Rico and we thought, oh, la isla bonita, it's so beautiful here. But instead of making those people full citizens, like all of us, we let them not be citizens. And then they feel, big word, disenfranchised. They feel left out, and they don't have all the rights they could have. Or we think some people with all the power should be rich, 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 and the people who don't have the power get to be poor. That's reaping what we sow. Or <coughs> let's say... People go all around the globe like locusts and just take everything, 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 and they don't leave anything for everybody else. That's reaping what we sow. Generation after generation, people who can make bad decisions, and it can affect you, little people, and it can affect all of us. Like the way in America, we still don't believe that black lives matter as much as all the rest of the lives. Those people who put that in motion leave all of us now not feeling safe. Does that make sense? Reap what you sow. So I'm going to talk to the adults for a minute now because children are listening. They are listening and watching and they're checking us out. They're listening like I did when I was a little person to loving teachers. My Mrs. Dixon is your Miss Marta all the people who help you and we care. Children are listening to songs of lyrics. They're listening to snatches of sermons. They're listening and they're watching. They're paying attention. Do y'all know Tanisha and Megan? Beautiful women, married, little girl named Elijah, new twins. One time, I guess I was preaching about what it's like to make a safe place. And they tell me that Elijah went home and was playing with her dolls and she said, it's okay, baby. It's a safe container right here. <laughs> a three-year-old listening to the sermon. Children will listen. God will speak to them, too. It's not just old Bible stories, but God shows up in their prayers. God shows up in the quiet spaces of their room. God shows up when they get on their knees to pray or when they pray in their beds at night. God shows up on the playground, inspiring them to be nice to the other kids when somebody's bullying them. God shows up in the lunchroom, telling them to go make a friend of a stranger. In fact, earlier in the first worship celebration, Miss Sierra was telling her story, and little Josie said to me, I wish I had my wallet. 
I've got some money in there, and I put it in the offering plate today. <laughs> Children are listening. That little Josie wondered if we were going to make enough bags for the kids in Puerto Rico when the children were doing that work. Or little Dominic listening. Do you remember when, before Dominic could really talk well, he would just walk around the sanctuary and go, peace with you? Don't you love when the children say peace with you? Children are listening to us and they're giving it back to us. They're giving it back to us. Like when Christian and Ethan can read those big words in Acts 2. Pamphiglia and Parthenians and all that stuff. Better than some seminary students. Or Jordan and Christian. Woo. Jordan graduated from high school this year. I know. And other Jordan doctor who was like this when I got here and is now this big, hairy, dreadlocked, grown man. He graduated from college this year. Watching your baby girl from the four-year-old who brought you to church to now the graduating high school student. Children are listening, they're watching us, and they're playing it all back to us. Don't you love it? When they hug us or shake our hands or wave to us from the pulpit, hi, Mommy, it's not just the mother that loves that little face, saying, here I am. I know I'm all over it. And when Michelle jumps in my arms and Maya lets me finally hold her, I am absolutely smitten. Children are listening and watching and learning. And sadly, some of what they're seeing in the world is a narrative that is counter to the gospel. They're, they're, they're at somebody's house spending the night and they hear language about those people. Or they catch a snatch of a news and they see dilapidated buildings in Puerto Rico that have not yet been restored. And they think, what? What kind of country is it when, when the little children can't go to school and, and there's no power and the only thing keeping their family safe is a tarp over the roof? Children are listening and they're watching as they go to class and have to learn active shooter training where they hear stories of other little kids who've been hurt. Children are listening and watching about what it means to be a person, a person of faith, a person responsible in this nation. So my friends, mi gente, that's why we do what we do. That's why it's okay to have a noisy little corner over there with some sticky fingers on the children's zone. That's why it's okay, from my point of view, it's okay to have them squiggling a little bit, moving around a little bit, because they're overhearing the gospel. They're overhearing the good news, and they can't learn how to be a person of faith off in a room by themselves. We are all of us their pastors. We are all of us their parents. We are all of us their role models. That text ends with a phrase that says, and God was with Samuel, and he grew in strength. God is with these little people, and God is with the little person inside each of us. My little person had some mad, crazy email traffic over the weekend. <laughs> they made me want to go, Lord, I need your help. God's with your little person. Edna mourning the loss of an uncle. Jorge thinking about his family. All of us wishing we could do more, be more, struggling with the stuff we struggle with. Your little person is in the hand of God. And so are they. We are the body of God, creating the safe container for struggle, for resistance, for growth, for transformation. Amen.